morning, everybody. Good morning. We've got a big meeting tonight. Anybody going? No one this is in there? Everybody that raised their hand, are you in support of the project? Okay. Just want to make sure. Well, welcome. Uh, we're going to start with our shining stars as we normally do. So uh, I believe Tim has both uh, today. So come on up, Tim. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Uh, the first shining star I got here is for Brian. It is a very simple weekend. My emergency pendant accidentally activated and security personnel weren't un were unable to turn it off. So at 9 p.m., Brian came in from his home and turned it off and reset it so that I had protection. This truly was an act beyond normal and deserving recognition. Congratulations, Brian. Thanks for all you do. Would you like to say anything? Yeah. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you. One of the neatest stories I've ever seen uh, it, from a, a person on staff at one of the communities I've been in. We were up here doing something in this area, and then walks Brian with a couple people who had walked in for a tour, and the uh, there was nobody. It was open lunch, and nobody was available in the marketing area, and Brian was giving them. <laughs> Did you hear some mention on that, Brian? No, I didn't. Okay. Right. You guys keep letting me come back. So. <laughs> well, next one's for Bobby Shaw, housekeeping. Oh, yeah. uh, after mentioning to Bobby 10 days ago that I lost my first stone near the activity room or in her apartment, she was determined to find my small emerald burst stone, which had come out of my ring mountain. She did find it today in the carpet of the activity room. She was so excited that she had the hand to me deliver to me while I was in the pool for water aerobics. <laughs> Needless to say, I am so grateful for Bobby's concern and determination in finding my burst stone. <laughs> Good job, Bobby. Would you like to say anything? Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, guys. And thank you guys for uh, continuing to write those and recognize the staff. I, mean, uh, I think this has been a good addition to this meeting. I think everybody agrees with that. So, um, Okay, so today we're supposed to have a special guest. I don't think he's here yet. Jeff Perot, I see him today. Jeff Perot's our alderman. I think he's going to be here, but we'll... Uh, We'll see. We'll stay flexible with the schedule. Um, we're going to do our committee updates, and then we're going to talk about construction a little bit more. And so, um, why don't we go ahead and get into the committee updates part? You want to? Actually, we have a demonstration today. Let's start with this. So everybody knows the carts that we keep down at the uh, garage. These are uh, to make it more convenient for you when you go out grocery shopping or whatever, and needing to bring things back to your apartment. We purchase. I think we have about, what, six of these? Yes. Six of these? In the five in the garage and it's in three at the aisle desk. Okay, so we have about eight of them. And, uh, it's like, where's Waldo, you know, when you need them? <laughs> and so, <laughs> just want to take, take the opportunity to remind everybody, if you're going to use one of the Mason Point carts, if you would, after you uh, unload the items in your apartment, please return it to the garage. Um, I'm sorry. Immediately. Immediately. Uh, um, and so, uh, but we also today uh, wanted to just bring this up in case anybody would be interested in purchasing your own. I know a number of you have done that. And so uh, we had some discussion about this issue and want you to know that we'd be willing to actually order these on your behalf and pay for them, and then we can just put it on your monthly statement if, if you'd like us to do that. We can take care of all the ordering, getting the delivery. There's probably a little setup. We can help you with all those things. So um, if you're interested in that, just contact Michelle or Barb. How much? We're going to get to that door. <laughs> We're going to demonstrate and everything. Barb's actually going to do the demonstration for us here. So this is, this is the standard edition, right? Yeah, this is the standard one, and then it folds up. 
good enough. And down. And then this is the one that the back folds half. And then you just push it and it folds in. Has a little clasp here and keeps it tight. Bob, any features you want to add there that we missed? We're fine. We're fine for Bob. Joan, you agree? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what's the price on these? They're both about $100. About $100. Uh, that's shipping and everything. Yeah. So, just an option for you in case you'd be interested. Um, you can let us know if you want the standard version or you want the Bechtel version. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would suggest if they can get another color than black that they do that because you know sometimes you think it doesn't belong to you when it's in black and it looks exactly like that. Oh, that's a good idea. If you order one of these, order a different color than black. That way you don't get uh, mean looks from people when you see you take them in the apartment. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good idea. So all the bars are marked. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, just want to take a minute and do that. That's a reoccurring thing here. So any other questions about these items? And it feels like price is right up here. <laughs> All right. All right, so why don't we go ahead and do the committee updates. Jerry, did you do anything for building and grounds today? Well, we got some results from a, a long time uh, working. Uh, has anybody, everybody, or has anyone uh, gone down to the, uh, or up here to the theater and seen the railings on both sides, up and down? So, so the, uh, and, and I agree back to Tim and his, and his group putting it together and installing it, and it looks very nice, and it's a certainly a big asset as far as safety goes. Um, the other things that I'm sure everybody has seen is that the, some of the trees have been replaced already and that the mulch has been spread around. There's been some guys throwing some, looks like fertilizer on the grass. So next thing will be, and I can't tell you when, but because of the weather of the, the situation, but the uh, flowers will be coming. Thank you. All right, are there any questions? What's the whole new signs? New signs? The ones you said were going to be reflectors? Oh, yes. We're, we're in the process now of getting new reflectors. Uh, the first ones we had were not uh, stable enough, and uh, we got some better ones, and uh, hopefully this will help everybody get in and out of uh, our location. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. And when's the irrigation go on, Tim? I know that was a question that's been coming up, too. We're turning it on, checking the leaks and stuff like that. Right now? Thank you. Yeah, they're in the process of starting to turn it on. Probably early April. Usually it's mid, late April before it stays on. Depends on the weather. Yeah. It's wet, it's late. So the irrigation will be coming on here within uh, probably four weeks. So, okay. Uh, who we got next? Employee appreciation? Anything today? Carol sent me a quick note a minute ago and said she was ill and not going to be able to make it. So she asked me to remind everyone that this is the last week to participate in the staff appreciation for the Easter bags that we're making for the staff. It's not their total Easter meal. These are things to help supplement. So if we can give them a bag with the, some items in it to enhance their Easter meal, it will just make it easier for them. So this is the last week you can either purchase um, non-perishable items and drop them off at any of the concierge desk or with Barb, um, or you can make a financial donation and Barb and Amy are going to be going shopping to help buy the items to put the bags together. So. That's your update for the Resident Employee Appreciation. Any questions? Okay, wonderful, thanks. Thanks, Becky, and thank you to the committee for doing that. I know just in the past, seeing when we do the food drives for staff, it is so appreciated, especially around the holiday time, so thank you all for that. Um, food committee, Mark Quigley. Good morning. 
I hope you found some new um, favorites on the expanded menu. Mine is the salmon sliders or the half uh, spinach salad with salmon on it. That's really good. Um, in terms of staffing, we're doing really well except for um, dishwashers. And we're always on, we're always open to hiring a good chef if somebody comes by, but for the most part, um, we're doing well and there's ongoing training of our servers. All the coffee machines have been switched back to your favorite brand. <laughs> if yours is out, all you have to do is call the 40 West phone number and someone will come and refill the machine. And there are sleeves for your coffee cups that are on order, um, so that so that you don't have to use two cups if it's too hot. Um, the there isn't I didn't know this, but <laughs> until our meeting, but there is an ice cream flavor of the month that started last month, and so I missed it. But this month it's um, mint chocolate chip. So if you want mint chocolate chip, you get, better get it before the month is over, and I don't know what's coming next month. But there are sometimes extra um, other desserts also, like pies or cakes or cheesecakes that are beyond what's on the menu. So if you're interested in dessert, ask your server. Um, the market is gonna be carrying some additional household supplies because people have asked so you'll be able to buy some um, either pots for your laundry or for your dishwasher. Um, we've also asked for greeting cards and wrapping paper to be um, available. And the reusable containers will be coming fairly soon. Uh, let's see, oh, there's gonna be a Cardinals opening day party with free advertisers and popcorn uh, in the pub. And Easter Sunday will feature an expanded buffet with a carving station. You will need to make reservations for Easter buffet in 40 West with the number of people coming anytime you want to be served so that they can make arrangements for seating. Um, another new thing, look for the opening of Simone's in April. So starting in April, every month, there will be a different theme in that restaurant. The theme for the month of April is burgers. And the food committee, along with some of the employees at food service, had a chance to do a blind taste testing when 10 of the chefs and cooks uh, made up their special ideas for burgers. And so we got to taste them all. It was a lot of burger to eat and, um, and vote, and we voted, and the winning chef will have their burger featured in Simone's with recognition also. So every month, as the theme changes, there will also be a blind taste testing that now you might wanna be on the food committee. You get, we'll get to participate in and, and vote and, and see what things the chefs come up with, but apparently they had a lot of fun down in the kitchen competing with each other. So uh, this will begin April 3rd. Uh, service will be only at dinner time between four and seven. You will need to make a reservation about, by the latest 11 o'clock, the day you want to eat. And maximum is about 20 people in there and the meal will consist of an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. Uh, we're also going to, some, a number of people have requested the pizza buffet. So what we're thinking of doing is we're going to try coming back with pizza buffet once a month on the third Saturday night of the month starting in May. This will be like it was before, which had salad, fruit, uh, vegetables, um, cookies, or some kind of dessert, and some other um, entree like a pasta salad or I mean a hot pasta dish or something for people who don't want pizza because that'll be the there will not be menu service that night so we'll give this a go and see how it goes um, taco Tuesday I just want to say something about that taco Tuesday is not put on by 
food service, it's put on by activities. So they simply give the food service the number of people they're expecting, and food service makes that amount of food. So if you're gonna to go to Taco Tuesday, please sign up either with the concierge or on Touchdown so they can give you an accurate count. Because if we've been running out of food, it isn't because the food service isn't making enough, it's because activities doesn't know how many people really plan on coming and they can't um, give the correct information. And lastly, um, Madison loves to plan parties. So if you're interested in uh, maybe a granddaughter is getting married or having a baby shower, a birthday party, family gathering, anniversary party, or something like that, you can meet with um, Madison and she can go through all the different options that are available for you. But, but um, people who have had parties have been very pleased with the decor and the service and the food options and all of that. So in case you didn't know, if you want to have a party, talk to Madison. <laughs> Any questions? Oh. I don't think I heard it, but <clears throat> are we still doing dollar beers for the car uh, opener? Right. Yeah, dollar so dollar beers too, that's important. Oh, draft. Okay. Dollar draft. So it'll be a wild scene. Um, uh, Life now in Richmond. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Vi and I are the co-chairs of Life in Richmond. But I just want to briefly uh, tell you what the committee, the composition of the committee is. We have representatives from each neighborhood. I hope you know who your representative is. And when you meet with your neighborhoods, that is your opportunity to give them ideas of what they should bring to our meeting. You know, activities or trips, that's your opportunity to give to them the ideas. And then we meet twice a month right now, and we meet with the staff, but we review those activities and trips uh, and they will, are voted on at the meeting. So just to let you know what the process is. Um, you all got a new yellow sheet this morning, is that correct? Is anyone missing a yellow sheet? Okay, we'll get you one, or you can come up and, and grab one. That would be great. Uh, this is the revised sheet. There was an error on the green one that you got in your mail slot last week. So this is a, re a revised sheet. Sign-ups today are at 1.45 this afternoon. And that is your opportunity to sign on Touchtown or go to the concierge. Nancy, you have a question? No, I wanted to know who painted the yellow. Oh, okay. Yeah, the correction, yeah, thanks, Brian. The correction on the green sheet was the April 30th presentation um, with the Chinese Christian program. That is now on April 30th, which is a Sunday. But it was initially listed at, on the 23rd. So that's the change that took place. Does anybody have any questions about any of what I just reported? Okay, good. I'm going to give the mic to Vi. She's going to describe the rest of the programs. Good morning, everybody. First of all, on my agenda today, I again want to thank all of you because you are responsible for the new plaque that has been put on the wall. Thank you, Becky, for providing that. Thank you, plaque. It's above the piano, so when you have a chance, please come and look at it. Uh, we would not have this piano if it were not for you. And we, I can't tell you how much it means to me. In regard to that, I think you probably all have received a copy of this article that was composed by Lutheran Senior Services. Uh, and I believe it is to be on the website. I haven't found it yet, but it will be on the Lutheran Senior Services website describing uh, what you all did. I have a little bit, a lot of things to say today. Uh, I want to go back and 
again and say March was a very full music-related month for us. I hope you were able to be with us for many of all these uh, programs. On the 4th of March, we had what was called the Rhythmic Experience. I have to be honest and say, I went and I thought, I am not going to like this one, but I don't know when I've had more fun. This was where we had a, a couple, three people bring in drums and we sat in a circle and experimented with playing drums and other uh, uh, instruments of that nature. So that was really fun. We had the Gatewood Trio here on March 6th, and I know some of you have uh, said, well, could we have them back again? We had our wonderful Westminster Choir from down the road. Alan Schwab has been a delight for us and promises he will return in the fall. We had our great Irish dancers. That was the first attempt we ever had at having a dancing group and they were wonderful from, I'm not sure what age, down to little age. And then we finished the month of March trying something new, putting the piano in the round, or seating in the round with the piano in the center. Bobby Schrader rather stunned us with his capability to sit down and play beautiful hymns, and we would throw out songs, and Bobby played those songs. It was really amazing. So, March is over and on we go. We are working very hard. Coming up on the 12th of April, we have the Hope Ensemble Quintet, which is piano, cello, two violins, and viola. On Friday 14th, April 14th, we're planning a trip, and this is the second trip now, to the Art Museum. We'll leave the mail room at 10.30, and the purpose of this trip is really especially dear to my heart. Our St. Louis Symphony Orchestra Volunteer Association, of which I've been a member for a long time, has a lot of educational programs, and one is titled Picture the Music. And in this program, children who are engaged in grades K through sixth grade, their teachers are invited to enter, and they select art, and from thousands of things that are sent in, 11, or pardon me, 100 winning pieces of art are, are chosen as winners. This year, those pieces of art are gonna be at the Art Museum. So we're gonna take a bus, we're going to uh, offer a bus trip there to view the Symphony Volunteer Association Children's Art Winning Art uh, on the 14th of April. And the music that you may have heard that I was playing at the beginning is the music that is used. The symphony chooses the music, and guess what? We're going to try and picture the music for old folks here, because I think it's a perfect fit. And the purpose idea is we'll listen to the music, let it go through our head and our thoughts, and then we put on paper what comes as a result of it. So we're working on that plan. Uh, Kent McNeil, president of our St. Louis Symphony Volunteers, oh, I should have said, we're going to uh, have uh, that activity here on April 14th. Kent McNeil, who is the president of our Symphony Volunteer Association, will speak to us April 26th. Kent has lived all over the world, has an interesting career, but as soon to be the outgoing president of the Volunteer Association and a friend of ours, he's going to tell us a little bit about the educational projects that the symphony does. Okay, our Mason Point Choir will be in full voice and we'll be here with our spring concert April 27th. April 28th, we have the St. Louis Children's Choir and then, last but not least, we're looking forward to the Chinese Christian program, which I've not seen, but I've learned from Nora that, that that will include singing, dancing, and that they will be in full costume, and there will be a big group. So once again, we're going to need to think about our parameters and how we put this on, but it should be interesting. Uh, then, final activity that I can tell you about this morning, hot off the press, our own Larry, who's not right here right now, but I learned uh, that Larry has a daughter who was an actress. She was, uh, and I've been kind of bugging Larry about asking her to come here. And guess what? His daughter, Jacqueline Thompson, is her name, 
who is a professor at the University of Missouri St. Louis in the theater department, she's a director, said she'll come. And this will probably be uh, later this summer after school is finished, but she, Larry told me that she can do some interactive things with us. So that should be really fun. So we have a lot for you to look forward to. That's Thank you. I think that's all. Um, you've got to go up here. What is that? Oh, the bus for tonight. Are you going to talk about? Are you going to talk? Where is? He'll talk about. It. Um, I think Nancy would like to add a few words. Okay. Thank you all. Really quickly, I wanted to talk about two things. First, the financial workshop series that we have coming to Mason Point. Cindy Whitman, who is a financial advisor with Cutter and Company, is coming to do six weeks of programming here. And the whole series are free. You can attend one or all of them. If you sign up for all six, she will give you a notebook with tabs so that you can keep track of each week's um, program. So the first one will be on April the 13th. Basics of Investing, the second one on the 20th of April, All About Stocks, April 27th, All About Bonds, May 4th, All About Mutual Funds, May 11th, All About Annuities, and then May 18th, Estate Planning. So you have to sign up the day before a program, but you can go ahead and sign up for all of them if you want to, to get the notebook and the tabs. And then I also wanted to mention that on April the 19th, we have Travis Thomas coming to talk to us. He was a coach of one of the coaches of the World Cup when it was over at Cutter. And he's going to talk about a book that he has written and his experiences with that. I think you'll find it very interesting. That's all I Does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, we Thank you, ladies. Uh, Wellness Committee, Joyce. of the dry sauna, they were put in your mail slots a while back. All of the rest is over to Drew to talk about. Um, community safety, they already talked about the railing in the theater, which I'm pretty excited about it. So on wellness events, our speakers, 28th of March, Sally Faith, who has written a book called, called Losing My Memory, Not My Mind, so that tells you how good this is going to be. She's going to talk on early dementia. It's her experiences with dementia, and it's also her goals for the future, so it's applicable. April 27th is the Diabetes Support Group, and I'm mentioning this because there are people who are diabetic who could benefit from this, and you're not showing up. So I'd like to encourage you to come to this. It's a good, free, open time to talk. You can ask questions. Talk about what's on your mind, what you need to know. We share with each other on how to manage your diabetes better. And you learn some interesting things that you never thought about. April 4th, private duty talk. This is right in this room from 10.30 to 11.30. And it's a services that will be offered by LSS in the future for private duty. So you might want to come and learn what's going to take place. Mini Med is my last subject, and I'd like to take a moment just to tell you what the topics are for the month of April. So the last week in March, which is tomorrow, remember it's every Tuesday, 6.30 to 9, or 9.30, in the theater. So tomorrow, glaucoma is one of the topics, emergency medicine, and then they're going to have a guest speaker on the world's fastest blind runner. I wonder how that works. 4th of April, 
problems associated with prematurity, and sinus infections. That's a good one. 11th of April, urinary tract infections and colon cancer. And then April 18th is urinary incontinence and care of a burn patient. Just want to add that there are more topics than that. I just didn't want to overwhelm you. And that's all I have. Thank you, Joyce. Yeah. Uh, just one quick plug for the LSS private duty. Um, just so everybody understands, one of the things that they'll talk about, uh, when you hire private duty, that's someone that comes into your apartment and provides you just with assistance around the house as you need. You know, it could be walking a dog, it could be any number of different tasks. Normally, when you reach out to agencies, there's a requirement um, that you have to do a minimum of like three hours is usually the number. Because think about it from their perspective, they've got to staff someone to come to your apartment and it doesn't make sense to come there for 10 minutes. So that's why they do three hours. With the LSS program, um, we're excited to be able to finally be able to offer this because there's strength in numbers um, to be able to offer you 15 minute increments because there's so many of us here, we're able to do that. Um, to where if you need help, say, just walking your dog, for instance, you could do that just for 15 minutes as opposed to having to pay for three hours. So um, I would encourage you, even if you don't think that's something you're interested in now, it, it's a good opportunity to come and learn about what could be available in case uh, something would come up in the future. So. What's the cost an hour? Uh, we're gonna the question was, what's the cost per hour? We're going to cover that at the presentation, so you have to come and find out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the answer to these, otherwise I'd tell you. Does anybody know the answer in here? I guess around 20 something. Oh, you talked oh. about the caregiver or you yeah. talked about the uh, a la carte? Well, I was talking about the a la carte, which is the 15 minute, but do you know either one? Well, the $15, I just looked into it. Uh, the, care, the caretaker thing is, 20, is $28. So I'm assuming that's 28, yeah, $28 per hour for a caretaker if you're doing the 15 per 15 minute program, it's 12 to $15 for that 15 minutes. So. Up to an hour. Up to one hour. Schedule that to one hour. Yeah. So, um, okay, uh, let's see. Next, we'll go to the club updates. So we have Judy Meyer and Donna Casperson who are gonna talk for Hook and Needle today. Sorry, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. I'll go first. Um, okay. I, before I forget it, um, if you can't find greeting cards in the market, we have some up in the hook and needle room, okay? <laughs> Donna's going to tell you she's our expert uh, purse maker. So she's going to show. We have show and tell today. This must be show and tell day. Okay. Uh, my, my little spiel sales pitch is for the women of Mason Point. And if you have, if you don't have a, a Mason Point purse, this is this is our sales pitch. And they're they're small. Which one you want? Right, sorry, this one. All right, they're small, and they hold your um, cell phone and your keys. And um, and we we have the shoulder shoulder length of our crossover. And there, we aim to please, so whatever you want, we will do. And then, this is a new, uh, new tradition, because uh, one of my sweet ladies mentioned, well, I like to carry a water bottle with me. So this one has a bottom to it, where the other one did. So if you have a small water bottle and your cell phone, it will fit in this little purse. And uh, we have tons of fabric up in the sewing room, which has been donated. We were very fortunate for that. And so um, you can come by and take a peek. But also, if you have a, some fabric of your own that you would like a special purse made, um, bring that in and uh, we can use that. Um, and here's, a, here's another size. So you can see that kind of depending on if you have the small cell phone or the large phone, we will measure, and as we said, we aim to please, and so whatever size you like, some just like the smaller size, and some want a, a little bit bigger. And then also we have, if you don't know what these are, these are called cozies, 
And these are a real hot seller too. And Judy's going to tell you about how great these are. And we have a special lady that makes these. We have several ladies that make these. Um, we're told that they don't know how to use them. But it's so you don't burn your fingers when you put your bowl of oatmeal or hot soup in your microwave. They're, they're made with all cotton, so they won't burn or go into flames. So you put your bowl in inside the cozy, put it in the microwave, and when you bring it out, when you take it out, you don't have to burn your fingers. You pick it up by, by the holder, okay? So that's how that works, okay? Uh, like I said, this is show and tell. <laughs> We have potato bags, they're $8. You can bake a potato or two or three in one of these and they come out really fluffy, got the directions with them, okay. Um, how many of you have one of these? <laughs> you probably don't know what they are. It's a Swiffer duster and you'll usually, I didn't think, anybody used them since we got cleaning service here, but I'm told a lot of people have, have these. And you have to buy disposable dusters, so now you don't have to buy them. disposable ones. You can buy one that's washable for $3 <laughs> and throw it in your washer when it's So that's what these are, okay? Um, Thanks to Ken Dillner, another new one, save your fingers for getting your hot toast out of the toaster. So that's $5, they are a big addition. We've been selling, selling these. Um, all kinds of goodies in the shop. And by Thursday, hopefully Thursday, we, I got a bunch of um, little bunnies, stuffed animal, stuffed bunnies that we thought maybe some grandmas or grandpas want to give their grandchildren for Easter, so um, they're kind of cute. <laughs> so stop by Thursday and check them out. Check all of our things out, so. Okay, any questions? Thursdays, Thursdays and Fridays, two o'clock. Two to four. Two to four. She wants to know how long it takes to make a purse if you have to be some done for Mother's Day. I would think by then she could get them done. Come early to pick out your fabric, though. <laughs> okay, thanks, dude. What an amazing outfit. Something practical out of this, too. I mean, I burn my fingers on toast and always struggle. It's the race when you get the hot bowl of soup out of the microwave to get it to where you're gonna go. That's great, really good. Um, let's see, library committee, I, I don't think we have any representative here today, so. Um, any, uh, Hank, veterans committee? Or club, excuse me. Our next meeting is a week from today, April the 3rd. And we're going to have Velma Rohan's son, Paul. He's going to talk about Velma's father and, and military experience in World War I. And, and specifically, he was involved in the big battle of the Meuse-Argonne, which was the first big battle the Americans got involved in. And he was seriously wounded. And uh, we're going to hear all about that. So that's a week from today, April the 3rd, 9.30, right here. And not just veterans, but all, all Mason Point people, residents are invited. And if you have any guests, that's fine too. And then the meeting on, in May is going to be March the 1st. And we're going to have Rebecca Tallman talk to us about a project in St. Louis where they're building tiny home villages for homeless veterans. These are transitional places for them, so I think we'll find it very interesting. Next two meetings, they're 9.30, first Monday, in this room. Thank you.
Yes. Are, are those meetings going to be videotaped now? I don't think so. Well, I'd ask that maybe you would do that. You, you would like them to be videotaped? I would. The, the meeting conflicts with Oh, yeah. volleyball, you know. Oh, okay. So, you know, there are other priorities, too. Yeah. <laughs> I understand that. So think about that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So, yeah. And just on that, so you know, while we're talking about video, that's, it's pretty neat. We can record it. You, you've probably maybe seen some of them in the app. We can also schedule them to run to, I don't know the new numbers. Used to be 900, 901. Is it 2467? 2493. We can schedule videos to run to 2493 and um, you know, kind of notify you that a replay of the Veterans uh, Committee meeting is going to be this day and time. So if you want to watch it, you can do that. So just look for that in the future. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up. Uh, and then finally, oh wait, no, we, uh, welcoming committee, uh, welcoming club. Yes. Just one announcement, we have a new volunteer that's going to help us, Joyce Forbes. We have not had any new move-ins, but hopefully they'll be coming. Uh, and Joyce has volunteered from the uh, <coughs> neighborhood one. Neighborhood two. Oh, sorry. Uh, and she also will be willing to help with new move-ins that have pets. Dogs specifically. Just dogs specifically. We'll find somebody for cats. No, I'm teasing you. <laughs> cats can find for themselves. <laughs> uh, anything from the workshop club today? I see a head shake there in the back. I'm wrong. Okay. All right. So I have just a couple of brief updates. Uh, when, uh, Joyce mentioned the sauna. Um, wanted to let everybody know where we're at with that. There's been a lot of questions. Um, we're still sourcing materials, so you know, um, but we do plan to install a dry sauna in our community, and the plan location for that is going to be in that office um, that's inside the pool area. So, sorry, John Bruno, um, <laughs> but we're kicking John somewhere else, and it's going to make a great sauna, though, John. So we'll, we'll find a comfortable spot for you. Um, uh, so. It, that's the where it's going to be. There's been some confusion over that on the location. Folks were thinking we were going to convert one of our, um, uh, the family restroom there, and, and, and that's not the plan. So I just want you to know that. Um, there will be a lock on this door because we want to make sure that everybody has gone through training and understands um, the risk, any risk associated, because there are, you know, if you're taking certain medications, it might make sense that, that you not partake um, in the sauna, so we want to make sure everybody's safe and using it, and so we'll have a similar orientation waiver uh, that probably all of you have done at one point or another um, in using our gym, our pool, it'll be another one of those types of waivers. Um, just real quick, the reason we're doing this, we believe it's on trend with the market. Um, you see a lot of these wellness spas popping up if you drive around the area, um, things like IV clinics, saunas, um, a lot of interest in wellness nowadays, and so we think that um, this is actually something we had talked about doing before we ever built the community. Um, we decided the time wasn't right then, um, and then when there started to be talk about it happening here, we made the decision to go ahead and move forward. Um, it's an amenity that we want to be able to offer, uh, not only to you guys, but future residents. And so that's how we arrived at today. Um, and then the completion date is still to be determined. There's, you know, we got, we got the uh, railing in, right? So it's, well, that's a good thing. So we got a lot of those tech projects out there, and this is one of those projects. We'll let you know as soon as we have an update um, on installation date, but we're not making necessarily commitments at this point. We're still sourcing the material. So, bye. I have a question. Have, have we explored, do other retirement communities have saunas? I've never heard of it. The question was, do other retirement communities have saunas? Uh, yes, we have seen that. Um, there are none with LSFs that have them. Um, and it's not the same thing, but some of our communities have hot tubs, for instance, that we don't have. And so it's common for us to try different things in different communities, and um, you know what works well in one, a lot of times we'll replicate another. So we're kind of a pilot for it here. Drew? 
From the size you're planning, how many people do you think can be in the sauna at the same time? Uh, the question is how many people can be in the sauna at the same time? In the sauna. In, in, the, sauna. in the sauna at the same time. Yeah. I'm thinking it's around six comfortably. Um, it'll be, I'm, I'm trying to remember, there were a few different layouts that we looked at. Six is around the number. And is there a time limit that the sauna just goes off? Yes, there will be a time limit that... How uh, long is it on? Yeah, the, there will be a time limit that automatically shuts off. I don't know what exactly that's going to be yet. What, what I'm, I'm asking the question because I want to see if, we, if the size you're planning is going to be adequate for the number of people who might want to use it who live here. Okay. We'll share more detail uh, with you. So I'm wondering how long you're planning people will be in the sauna for their sauna session. Uh, I'm probably not the best one to answer that. Uh, is it 15, 20? We, we have a 20 minute limit. 20 minute limit. 20 minutes. So we can get 18 people through an hour. So 10 hours and everybody's been through the song. Yeah, I just can't imagine. Obviously, we don't expect 100 of you to use it. It's like everything. Some of you use the movie theater, some of you have never watched a movie in there. So, you know, that's, we expect that. Um, but we, again, we think it's important not only for you guys, but also future residents too. We believe there's going to be an interest in things like this. Um, and, I, you know, one day IV clinics and other things that you see out there, you know, that will probably be here at some point. So, any other questions on the sauna? Uh, and then uh, I just want to make a brief mention here about the survey. Oh, go ahead. So Vi's comment was that she assumes there will be some sort of waiver that is signed um, to relieve LSS of liability. And yes, absolutely. That's why we're gonna lock, we're gonna have a lock on the door. And we won't activate, it'll it'll work off the key card is what we anticipate. And uh, your key card won't work until you've gone through the orientation and completed the waiver. So any other questions? It'll be a two lock system. You'll have to get in the pool and then you'll have to get in the, the sauna. So you gotta have both done. Um, okay. The other thing, and I'm sorry, I uh, did not have an opportunity. I wanted to talk a little bit more in depth today about the survey results. We had sent a survey around for your feedback related to the independent living project. Um, we're not ready to talk about it yet, but uh, we will continue to understand those that information better and then present it to you in future months. Okay, so just wanted to make comment there. Um, okay, I haven't seen Jeff Perot come in, so we're gonna continue on here. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, so I'm gonna invite to the stage and the person that's gonna do our presentation, his name is Julia Beekler. You've met Julia before. She's the Care Center Administrator and Assisted Living Administrator. Uh, some of you have been going on tours of the construction area over in the renovation, and we've heard feedback from many of you uh, that you found that very helpful to go and look at the space. And so um, we're going to go through, Julia's going to share um, a bit about the renovations, and uh, we think this will be helpful for you should you choose to go on additional tours in the future, which we're going to start offering more of in the construction area. We're gonna send this presentation after today, so maybe print the presentation out and bring it on your tour with you, and we'll help point you and say this is here and this is here, all right? Uh, big hand for Julia B. Clark. Thank you for having me. Um, I hope you excuse my casual attire. I left my car on the driveway last night with the sunroof open. So, I had to do a quick change before um, I came in, but I do want to mention that we have quite a few of you signed up to come with us tonight to our public hearing, um, and we're so appreciative and excited. Uh, we are going to have a little pre-party downstairs in the pub at 5, and then we will be tar departing from Mason Point on the buses at 6. And uh, we ask that the speakers who are presenting tonight on behalf of Mason Point get on that first bus. Um, and then Drew and myself will meet you there. 
um, with a few other team members, and I will I will change before that. <laughs> it's going to leave from the community center. Yes, thank you. So I want to um, just to give a quick overview of our phase one of our construction project, which has already been initiated a few weeks ago. And so feel free to kind of meander over there and you can kind of see through our windows and the construction walls, what we've done so far. Um, but this is our tentative timeline right now is that we are on track that our construction began in February. Um, our current residents are selecting new apartments. Uh, so that has been taken place and it's going really great. And we are still planning on moving our residents who are in the hillside building, which is this building right here connected to you all, um, in September, August, September. So those things are all moving, moving forward. The next slide here is just uh, a floor plan that can give you some perspective. I know it's a little bit difficult to follow if you're not an architect or you're well versed in this community, but um, you all are over here, way over here, right? So if you keep on going down that hall, past that entrance, past Rochelle, and you keep going, this is going to be the first destination um, that you will see during phase one. Um, eventually this arrow will be full of an assembly area and that uh, will be a great gathering space for our assisted living, um, but this will be completed in that late summer timeline. So in this area, we are gonna have a fitness center, uh, the salon will be relocated there for our assisted living population, and um, just a nice little sitting area here, a hydration station that you can hang out while you're waiting for your appointment. This is a combination, these units are a combination of studio apartments, two bedroom apartments, and one bedroom apartments. So we are really thrilled to bring the option of two bedroom apartments to you all, and that I know has been an ask. Um, and so down on this hallway is uh, our two bedrooms. And if you're lucky enough, this is gonna be my office, so you can be right by me. Um, so that's where the two bedrooms are. So let's continue to the left of the screen. I have a, another blue arrow there that says dining room. So that is going to take you over into uh, the primary dining venue for assisted living. It's gonna be able to seat around 80 people and uh, the kitchen is going to relocate up into that restaurant area, which we're really excited about. Um, and it's just gonna be out of this world gorgeous. So I have a few pictures of it, but it's gonna be super, super functioning for all of you. It's gonna be wonderful. If you would need it, of course. So going all the way down, this is currently our um, reach entrance, our rehab entrance. So it's off of entrance number three, is that is where you would come in here. This is going to be a lounge club room area. So this is gonna, um, we're gonna have kind of a, it's gonna look like a bar setup, but it's not gonna be like y'all's bar where we are, have liquor and stuff there all the time. Um, but it would give opportunities for our residents to congregate there and have a gathering with uh, their family and friends. And then also we'll have game tables there available for people just to really hang out. And that is in this lounge area here. And then um, right over here in this corner is just like another little nook uh, where people can hang out, play games, and this, it'll have a nice fireplace there. Behind this wall here um, is the movie theater. So we are installing a movie theater for our assisted living residents, which we're thrilled about. Um, so we'll have two at Mason Point now. Again, these are a combination of studio and one bedroom apartments. And then, as I mentioned, this is where the kitchen will be. So we are, this is a huge investment on our part, but really just from an operational standpoint, it makes sense for us to relocate that kitchen uh, closer to where the food is actually being served. I'm gonna quickly flip through these, but this is just gonna give you an idea of what some of the finishes are in the resident apartments. Um, so we will have, we've tried to painstakingly 
really work through details to make sure that this apartment is incredibly functional and it can be um, used for all different levels. Uh, so you can see someone could roll up their wheelchair here if needed, or if you didn't want that option, we'll have an option to um, go in and eat. this will just be cabinets. But kind of the finishes over there, I know it's hard to see on the screen, but it'll give you a little bit of an idea of what it's gonna look like. Same thing with the bathroom. Um, the, whole, the whole intent behind our finishes in these apartments was just to make it super home-like and not feel like you're in an institutional room or a hospital-like room. So I think they're gonna turn out to be super beautiful and warm and cozy for, for everyone um, and just make it feel, you know, like home. So that's, that's our goal. This is our um, movie theater finishes. So similar to kind of what you guys have here, we won't, we're not gonna be doing the stairs over there, uh, but we will have recliners with uh, cup holders and little food trays. Um, and I think the finishes just turned out beautiful in terms of what uh, the design team has picked out. So again, just a great place for our residents to go and hang out. This is the fireplace lounge that I mentioned earlier. So that's, um, it's gonna have this beautiful, huge marble slab, I think and a little fireplace in there. So it's gonna, again, just be super cozy and a destination for people to congregate. This is that club room area. Um, this is going to offer a different feel from the other destinations that we're doing at Mason Point. And it's gonna be, have more of like a masculine feel to it. Um, but again, think of like club chairs, you know, a nice leather seating. Um, and then again, the ability to um, come up to this bar area. This picture has actually been revised and we are gonna do counter seating. So it won't be bar height, this will be counter, counter height, which I think is gonna be super functional. Um, we recently were in a restaurant and I saw you know, that and I thought that was a, an awesome idea and a little bit more easy for people to get onto the chair versus like stepping up onto a bar stool. So um, that is that area. And just another little picture of the club room and the finishes, um, which I think again is gonna be super beautiful. The restaurant which I talked about, um, that's definitely gonna have a more calming feel. Um, we are investing in a lot of our spaces, new ceilings. Um, so anyone who's been involved in home construction or design can testify to what big of a change that makes to a space. And so we're super excited that we're gonna have these vaulted ceilings and um, beautiful little you know, chandeliers everywhere. We will have a private dining room space and family style tables as a lot of our residents really enjoy eating every meal together. So we're gonna have those options for them as well. <clears throat> this is gonna be our wellness destination, uh, also known as the blue room, I call it. Um, so it's a lot of blue, but we are going to be putting in equipment that is specific to the older geriatric population, so things that are really useful. And then also we are going, um, going to invest in a program called Rock Study. And it is a um, punching bag essentially, but it's a specific program that we will get certified on. And it helps uh, specifically with Parkinson's and other neurological conditions. Um, that's been proven to really uh, aid in the recovery and keeping it um, like side effects under control and those type of things. So we're excited about this. Next is our salon. So we, we are gonna have a designated salon for assisted living. And then we also are gonna have a desi designated salon for our long-term care uh, neighborhood as well. So this is a big change for us and we're very excited uh, to be able to offer this service to our assisted living residents. And just how I had talked about the hydration station, this is right outside the salon. So what we envision happening here, puzzles, games, again, an area just to wait either for uh, the restaurant to open or if you have, um, you're waiting for one of your fitness classes, this is the place you would go if you're waiting for a sit and stretch or 
chair yoga, this is where you kind of would hang out, and also if you had an appointment for a salon. So that's a lot of information. This is phase one, and I'd be happy to come back again um, to talk about other destinations um, within the assisted living, but I didn't want to overwhelm you all, so this is kind of the first step, right? Um, any questions? Yes, bye. I may have missed it, but sure. there's a space that's going to be, I know, not this big, but a gathering space where you will have programs of their own, multi-purpose room equivalent, but smaller. Yes. Um, so this blue area here is kind of what we're referring to right now as our main street. This is not in the first phase, but in this area, it'll be completely designated space for assemblies and presentations. So she's asking, um, where is it like, in reference to this line? This line is representing the hallway. This line is representing this hallway from hillside, from this entrance here, towards the last reach. So it would be like behind Julia, mm -hmm. basically, where, is where the assembly would be. Yeah. And how many do you anticipate you will be able to hold in that room? Yes, how, how many do you think we will be able to anticipate holding in that room? I think we're through. Right here. It was, uh, I think it was 75 plus. Yeah, 75 or 80 is what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be huge. And it's also going to have um, partitions that we can pull out and collapse to make it bigger or smaller based on what, what's happening in there that day. So to make it really super multi, multi-purpose. Yeah, a lot like this space where we can close these doors, you know, we've got screens on the side rooms just to make the most use of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Is the assisted living space Renovation happening whether or not our IL expansion goes on? Yes. We have started that. I'm sorry. I'm new at this, y'all. I gotta remember that. Um, the question was is the assisted living renovation going to take place with or without the independent living building? And the answer is yes. Yes. How many assisted living uh, areas will you have? The, the, Accommodations, and the second question is, what is your thinking about all future MPCA meetings? Where would they be held? Okay, so there was two questions. There is, um, what is I'm hearing the total amount of assisted living apartments that we're going to be developing? Is that accurate? Yes. How many are will they be? I think the official number that we've landed on. I hate saying a number. It's around 120 units total. Yeah, I was going to say 112. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then where will the MPCA meetings be held? <laughs> that's this meeting, and that's to be determined, John. To be determined. Where the initial look to do anything to expand this room was not favorable, um, and so we, we don't have an answer for that just yet. Thank yes, sir. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Will there be parking for assisted living? The question is, will there be parking for assisted living? And the answer is yes. Uh, service or garage? Uh, it would be service. Parking. It's surface. Yeah, the question was, was it surface or garage parking? Um, we are proposing that we will have under garage parking for the new independent living. So we're anticipating the surface parking would be for assisted living. Speaking of parking, you guys might be interested, you know, the park, it's the employee parking lot today, right behind us here. Um, we're going to be refinishing and doing some different things over there to make that a nicer entrance into the independent living. And so um, maybe you'll find that a little bit more convenient than driving all the way around here. Yeah. I think there was another question in the back. No? Yes. Are there going to be guest rooms? Uh, Mary's asking, is there going to be guest rooms? And yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. You're welcome. We plan on having two additional guest rooms. Good. Two additional guest rooms. Two additional guest rooms. At an affordable market rate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Not to exceed $100. I can. Jeff your bar chairs swivel. <laughs> Thank you for that. That is a very important detail. Um, yes, we, I believe those swivel, but if not, I'll email the design team after this. So his request was that the bar, tape, the bar chairs swivel. And I did want to just, um, many of you have approached me about just feeling anxious. Is there going to be enough room in assisted living? Um, and the answer is yes. This is, um, we have room for everyone, and you are obviously the priority for those apartments. Um, so if you ever have any angst or anxiety or just want to walk through and talk, talk about it, you can always um, meet with myself or um, Annie Marks, who is uh, my partner there for selling a uh, assisted living home. So she can help get you in the right place, too. And I actually see her back there, so you want to see another wave to everyone? <laughs> so yeah, we have plenty of apartments. Everyone has a place here. So um, if you need us, we're here. Yes. So does this include memory care also? So Lou, yeah. uh, special yeah. care. <laughs> so um, she's asking, does this include memory care? So um, again, I'm showing you phase one, but we are very excited that we will be adding a brand new assisted living memory care in our phase two. So yes, my same point will have a memory care assisted living. So we'll and show you more detail kind of like this later on once we have that. Yeah, but that is 100% in the plan and a need within the community. Yes, Mark? What's the time frame for each of these phases? Sure, so the question is, um, what is the time phase for each, the time phase for each of these um, phases? So, you know, that is a great question, and I don't need to hold me to anything, um, but the goal is, is that we are going to be finishing phase one at the end of the summer. Um, we are going to begin moving our long-term residents um, for that area to be renovated in, at the end of April. And then once those phases are completed, then we would start on the memory care assisted living units. So that's probably um, 20, early 2024. Yes? Is that memory care also going to be built regardless of what happens to the other plan? The question is, is the memory care going to be built regardless of the other plan? And the answer is yes. Yes? On that map, where is the highway? <laughs> <laughs> where is the highway? The highway is at the top. The highway is at the top of the screen. Good question. Yep, yeah, so these units um, are up towards the highway. So when you go on your tour, do we have the form book or the uh, foam boards posted yet? So there's foam boards of a lot of what we showed you in the location that it's going to be. So that may help you too if you wander around or go on the tour. Yeah. It's easy if you come over by us, we'll walk you around. It's hard to visualize everything, especially because. We're all facing in different directions, and it's huge, right? But, yes? The waiting list. Yes. I want to be on it. I want to be there. I want us to be on it. Yeah. So the question is, how do you get yourself on the waiting list? Um, so in our community, the whole purpose of us, right, is that we can progress for whatever needs that you, you may have. Um, and so while we do, um, we do have a waiting list, um, you all are our priority. Um, we haven't taken any outside new residents, um, so we wanna make sure that we accommodate each and every one of you. If you feel like you're approaching or if something changes with your uh, physical health or your mental health and you need that level of services, um, we would be in contact with you and making sure that we get you placed in the appropriate, the appropriate level of care. It would probably be Annie Marks that they would reach out to. Right? Correct. So we can make sure everybody has that information. Um, yeah, so we've had several, several independent living residents who have had a change in their level of care needs. 
and we've been able to accommodate them over in our assisted living with no problem. So this is this is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I know there is anxiety around it because you you know I get it. But I promise you, this is this is what we do, and um, we'll help work work through it with you. Does that help? Okay. Thank you for having me, and I'll see you all tonight. Thanks, Julia. All right, so we're ten minutes over time. Any other questions before we go? Ten after twelve. Ten after twelve minutes. <laughs> Any other questions uh, for me about anything? Yes. Yes, there's a uh, vet downstairs uh, that's tonight. We can come tonight uh, before the, the uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, appetizers. Okay. Are uh, only people riding the bus to the meeting able to come to that, or what's of us coming in the car and coming to the what was the question? The question is for the event later. That's for the folks that are going over to the meeting. Is that right? Whether they're driving themselves. Or oh, whether you're driving yourself or not. Yes. And I think Michelle has, we were planning on others coming tonight too. Yeah. So we figured a lot of you would want to come celebrate with us before too. So you're, you're all welcome to come. <laughs> Project supporters, that is. Not all welcome, right? What would you say? So if it was my party, you'd all be there, right? All the supporters are welcome. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll probably look for to put some times on on the activity calendar that people can sign up. Yeah, we'll, we'll plan on. Today at two, whatever you want. If you just get in contact with me. Yeah, if you let Barb or Michelle know, I'm happy to do that. So. I've lost half of you, so I guess we're over. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good day.